that's really interesting that you brought up this whole guilt thing because I, I was talking to my brother today, my older brother, about how I was feeling confused and going through all this stuff about what to do. He says, this is my very Catholic brother. He says, I think you, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to tell you that I think you have a guilt problem. <laughs> and I thought, guilt, hmm. You know, and he goes on and tells me all these things that I've done <laughs> in my life that I should probably feel guilty about, right? And the only thing I could think of was, at, at most, I might feel regret. But I feel like whatever I've done, if it didn't, you know, fit with what most people would say is, is good, I did the best I could in that moment, and I'm okay, I, you know, I, I learned from it, or whatever, you know, you know, you go back and think about these things and then feel guilty about them, it's, there's, there's no reason to feel guilty, you do the best you can, you know, in that moment maybe I just wasn't clear and I did what most people would say the wrong thing. But I don't see it that way. You know, he set the captives free. I remember with my, my biological father, he, he had a, a, a very hard and very angry life and, and was quite depressed and so on and so forth. And at one point, when he was quite up in some years, and I was just, I was just so intoxicated with God and so full of joy and happiness and innocence, he came to me and he just uncharacteristically just opened up. Just his, He just opened up to me and he just went, Dave, I really wasn't a very good father for you. And it was one of those kind of disclosure moments. Mm -hmm. and I said, that's nonsense. I said, you did the best you could do, I did the best that I could do. And we don't have to play this guilt game anymore. And from that moment, just from that moment, his life just lit up. Mm. He, you know, he had been on medications for, you know, depression. He lit up. He lit up like a child in joy. He, he had been having some fear, anger issues. I mean, he, he lit up. He, he started going to nursing homes, like three, four, five nursing homes a day. Not visiting not only his mother, but all these other people just to cheer people up. He had this thing called Web TV when the internet just came out, you know, where you use a little keyboard and everything. He was sending love letters to politicians. Al Gore and things like this. I'm like, God. It was just amazing to watch him go. And of course, he'd been di diagnosed as bipolar, manic depressive, so the biological mother and the biological sister said, oh God, he's gone into one of these, you know, bipolar swings. <laughs> bipolar swing. He's manic. They said, he's manic. I said, no, he's not. He's, he's lit up in God. He's, God. he's been healed. Because <laughs> there's no depression there. It's just, he's like a rocket going up. And that, I watched him, but I do recall that thing where Dave, I wasn't a very good father, and me just saying, not for one instant do I believe that. And, and said the mm. same thing you just said. You did the best you could do, I did the best. And we just, we just lit up. Even, I remember mm. after that point too, where they, uh, the biological mother and sister were thinking of putting him back and institutionalizing him, because they were frightened. He's, they were like, he's not taking his medicine. Ooh! He said, he doesn't need it! <laughs> oh, and he's, he's, he can't sleep at night. He's up all night writing love letters to everybody, emails and everything. Yeah, 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 that's right. He's having a spiritual experience, you know. He's lighting up. I don't I didn't hold him to the past anymore and well that's my mind, I guess, is that powerful. So he, he lights up. That's how it works, you know, with your brother, with everyone in our life. If we don't hold them to the past, then they're just characters that are acting out what we think and believe. And when we don't hold on to the guilt, then they reflect back that joy and innocence. Isn't it great that it works that way? I, I live around a lot of happy people too. 
Mm. I go, and I know a lot of very happy people all over the world. Cause, and I'm not even surprised by it anymore. It's like, oh yeah, they're just reflecting my, my own happiness. It's just the way that it works. Mm. So it's, it gives you more incentive to do forgiveness work. When you realize the whole world's going to light up, you know, when you forgive the world. You know, it's, it's worth it. It's mm. worth, worth all those mind training exercises and forgiveness exercises and practices. I, I don't think it's a drudgery at all. I mean, I, once you find the benefits of mind training, it's like, oh yeah. People say, oh, it sounds like brainwashing. I say, oh, it's mind washing. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> but rather than learning, it's like an unlearning, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like learning how to unlearn. That's it. That's what, when people come to community, it's just a willingness to unlearn everything. And, it, and that does take some trust and willingness, because the old habits are so anchored in there, you know, we, we think there's our survival mechanisms. We think those old conditioning patterns are, help protect us, but they actually closed us down, you know, they kept us in denial and repression. And then we get into the miracle and it takes away all that, it just washes it away. And So I studied psychology and philosophy, I studied a lot of that. But then it was the actual experience of doing the workbook lessons mm -hmm. and getting myself fully over to them, then that's where the transformation occurred. And it's fun. We, we have a joyful relationship in God with the whole universe because it's, there's much to celebrate, there's much to rejoice in, in the miracle. And you don't have to keep hacking away and analyzing the past and you know, trying to figure it out, I mean, ah, oh, dream analysis, you know, people would come to me, can you do some dream analysis with me? I said, oh, I really would rather not. Uh, I said, yeah. well, that's not very helpful. I said, well, pay attention to your feelings in the dream and your interpretations, and then you can free your mind by letting go of, of those interpretations. Who cares? But that it was green. I must have had, had, had no, no, don't analyze it. Green is green. <laughs> but Freud said, I don't care. This is Christ speaking now. Let's get this straight. Freud was Freud and now this is Christ. And let's quit the dream analysis and get into the, you know, the forgiveness. Don't, don't get trying to figure things out. You can get lost into analysis and study, you know, we want to get into experience here. And yeah, it happens.